Real quick, just a few things. Hey, Mount Bell, let's do this. Let's greet our guests and visitors this morning. We're so glad you're with us. So glad you're part of our service today. Those who are watching Facebook, live streaming. If you are a visitor this morning and, you, and you've and got any questions, and hopefully you've visited our welcome center out there. If not, there's a couple of ladies, Sister Della, Sister Missy, y'all waved in red shirts. If you got any questions, they'll help you. We have three to five class going on. We've got children's church from 6 to 12 going on right now. So if you'd like for your children to go that way, or we also have nursery in the back. So they will help you and, and help guide you and direct you in the right direction. Amen. Amen. Now, how many's come to worship the Lord this morning? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's do this. Let's invite God into this house. Amen. How many knows he don't show up? We might as well stay at the house. Come on. You could have slept longer and everything else if you wanted to or changed the oil on the car or whatever you needed to do. But I tell you what, I always think about it. I like what David said. David said, I was glad when they said, let us come into the house of the Lord. And I understand why. Because in his presence, there's fullness of joy. Come on now. In his presence, presence, people are saved, people are healed, people are delivered, people are set free. Amen. So let's let's bind our faith together this morning and invite Jesus into this house. Amen. Father, we come to you today, God, giving you thanksgiving and praise. We thank you for your mercy and your grace and your loving kindness. We thank you, God, for your mighty acts and, and mighty wonderful power, Father Lord. And God, we ask you right now to come into this house. We invite you, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. We invite you to come into this place, God. God, let your glory fill this house. Let your Shekinah glory come into this place, God. Let your Holy Ghost fire begin to fall and begin to move. Let your anointing begin to flow in this place, Father God. Anoint the singers and musicians as they lead us into worship. Anoint our pastors. He brings forth the word today, Father Lord. Lord, anoint the word. Let it go forth and do its work, God. Save, sanctify, fill with the Holy Ghost. Heal, deliver, strengthen, and encourage, and set free in this house, God. Do mighty acts, mighty wonders, mighty miracles in this place today, Lord. And Lord, we ask it all right now by the power, by the authority, and by the name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody said, Amen.
knows he's alive ought to give him a little praise this morning. Somebody knows that that same power brought him up out of the grave now lives down on the inside of you to defeat the devil with that somebody ought to magnify him just a little this morning. Somebody ought to glorify him. I'm about to tell somebody today, my God's alive. He said he's alive forevermore. He defeated death, hell, and the grave. If you don't know that he's alive, you say, how do you know he's alive? Because he lives right down on the inside of here. How do you know he's alive? Because he took this old sinner and washed his sins away and now made him a saint that he can enter into the kingdom of heaven. I've got news for you. Dead God can't do that for you. Come on now. Dead God can't help you. Dead God can't heal you. Dead God can't save you. Dead God can't deliver you. There's only way you can be saved, healed, and delivered, and that is through the risen Son of the Lord, the Jesus Christ. That's the only way. Woo. My, he's alive. Hallelujah. My, I'm telling you, I feel him already. Let, let's, let's just move real quick. Let's, let's do this. Ushers, get ready. We're going to our, our, receive our tithes and offering today. We've been talking about tithing lately in the last few Sunday mornings. We talked about, first of all, that tithing was not giving. What tithing really meant was it's not stealing. We pulled that from Malachi chapter 3. He said, how would you rob God? He said, by not bringing your tithes into the storehouse. Also, we talked about when you tithe, you put money in its rightful place below God. And today I want to address something this morning that really, really shows where we are sometimes. What tithing really says is, is that you trust God in his word he said in Malachi that if you'll bring your tithes into the storehouse he'll open the windows of heaven and pour out on a blessing you cannot contain he said he'll rebuke the devourer for your sake he said that your fruit if you will will not fall on the ground so in turn when you bring your tithes what you're saying to God is I put faith in you I trust you that you can handle anything and everything in my life but here's the key here's the flip side when you don't bring your tithes you're telling God you don't trust him Come on. You're telling God, I, I, I can trust you for saving my soul, and I can trust you for healing me, and I can trust you for delivering me. But God, I don't really think you can handle my money. Come on now. I know it gets quiet, but I think we need to understand and learn some things. If you don't bring your tithes, and you're telling God you don't trust his word, and you don't trust him, he's either God of all, come on, or he's not God at all. I know it's quiet. I think sometimes we need to learn some things. You, we say it around here all the time. We don't take up tithes and offering to raise money. We take up tithes and offering to raise people. Because if you'll trust God with your wallet, come on, you can trust God in every area of your life. When you can give that money that's already rightfully his back to him, and he says, here's the problem. Here's, I'm trying to move, but we got to get this this morning. When you bring your tithes, you're saying, God, i got faith and trust in you. So I want to encourage you this morning, begin to tithe faithfully. Because I'll tell you right now, there's many can testify in this room that since they started tithing, God has took care of them. Come on. Let, let me do this, and, I, and I won't, I won't even, you don't have to do a show of hands. You don't have to be guilty. How many in this house would testify that God has always provided for you? If you have, give him a hand clap. He's always put food on your table. He's always put a roof over your head. He's always made a way for you to get. So in turn, I encourage you this morning to start giving in your tithes or start bringing your tithes to the storehouse and see if he won't open the windows of heaven and pour out in a blessing you cannot contain. Let's pray. Father, we come to you this morning, God, giving you thanksgiving and praise for the men and women who have come out to worship your name, God. We thank you, Father God, that what you're about to do in this house and what you're about to do in their lives, Father Lord. Lord, we ask you right now to bless the tithes, bless the offering, God, for the use of your kingdom, God. And Lord, we ask you right now to bless the gift and the giver, Father God. Help us, Father God, begin to trust you in what you said you will do, Father Lord. And Lord, let us have faith, God. Let our faith grow and encourage in these areas of our life, Father Lord. And Lord, we ask it right now, Father Lord, that you bless the gift and the giver today. And in your name, Jesus, we pray. Mount Mel Church, a healing church for a hurting world. My name is Lisa Norton, and from Pastor T.H. Farrell and the staff of Mount Mel, we welcome you to our church. 
We are so excited that you are here. If you are a visitor or guest, be sure to stop by the connection desk on your way out to receive your exclusive gift. Here are a few upcoming events and reminders to keep you connected. Our Corporate 21 Day of Prayer and Fasting continues through January the 21st. The church will be open nightly at 6 p.m. for prayer. Following the fast on Wednesday, January the 22nd, there will be a healing service at 7 p.m. During the month of January, Mount Vale is offering a new members class called The Connection. It will be offered every first, second, and third Sunday of each month at 4.30 p.m. located in the Young Adult Classroom. This will be a three-part series available for ages 13 and up. The Senior Adult Ministry is calling all seniors. Pastor Jesse and Melissa Youngblood are excited to announce the January 2020 launching of SWAT, Seniors with a Testimony for ages 50 and up. The first SWAT monthly meeting will be held on Wednesday, January the 15th at 11 a.m. in the Fellowship Hall. They want to see you there. The Ladies' Ministry will start holding monthly meetings. Monday, January the 27th at 6.30 p.m. will be the first meeting. All ladies are welcome to come and bring a finger food. And let me tell you, the ladies know how to have fun. Saturday, February the 1st will be the annual workers and leadership meeting for all workers, leaders, and ministers. Breakfast will be served at 8 a.m. in the fellowship hall, and the meeting is to follow promptly at 9 a.m. in the main sanctuary. If you are involved in any ministry at Mount Vale, you should be at this meeting. The ladies' ministry is currently selling tickets for this year's Valentine's Day banquet. This banquet will be held on Saturday, February the 8th at 5 p.m. in the Fellowship Hall. Tickets are $25 per couple, and to purchase your tickets, please be sure to visit the Connection Stand. Mark these events on your calendar. We hope you will make plans to attend one or all of these events. To stay connected, be sure to like and follow us on Facebook and Instagram or visit us on our church website at mountvalecog.net. Just remember, we're saving you a seat. Until next time, God bless. Let's all stand, come on. Let's get ready to worship the Lord this morning. Just like a tree that grows by the water.
worship him right now. Come on, let's just worship him all over this house. Come on, let's lift our hands right now and just begin to worship him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We worship you, Lord God. Hallelujah. We magnify you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 You're worthy, Lord. You're worthy, Lord. Hallelujah. We glorify you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 
Come on, let's just one more time. Come on, let's just worship him right now. Hallelujah. Jesus is in this room, here right now, here right now, making this place our sin, holy ground, holy ground. Ooh, we're standing on holy ground. your voice all over this place. Come on, let's just worship him right now. Hallelujah. Holy are you, Lord. The Lord, fling a king glory as I run inside your throne room. Before you I bow. The veil is torn. The door fling wide. I see glory I run inside your throne room before you I bow
again about the veil. Come on, let's sing it about the veil being torn. Hallelujah. We see glory as we run inside. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The veil is torn. The doors swing wide. I see glory as I run inside your throne room before you. I bow. The veil is torn, the doors be wide. I see glory. I run inside your throne room before you. I bow. The veil is torn, the doors be wide. I see glory.
Praise the Lord. Let's give the Lord a good hand clap of praise. Amen. Hallelujah. So good to see you in the house of the Lord. Stretch your hands this way and let's pray over this need. Father, right now in the name of Jesus. Let's combine our faith. He said, if any two be agreed as touching anything, how many going to agree with us? Father, in the name of Jesus, we come in agreement right now, God, in obedience to your word and believe, God, for a miracle in this situation. God, that you would move mightily, that you would make a way where there seemed to be no way, that your hand would be upon this situation. God, we give you glory and praise and honor for what we believe that you're going to do in this situation, God. Thank you for always being there. Thank you for helping us. Thank you for moving by your spirit thus far in this service. And God, we commit the rest of this service into your hands. In Jesus' name, amen, 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 amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, if you believe the Lord did something, give him a good hand clap of praise. Got one more song before we get to the word. But let's give all of our guests and visitors a good warm welcome, Mount Vale. I mean, a good one. Come on. We're glad to see you here. That's kind of weak. Let's give them a good one. All right. Uh, I want to borrow a phrase our pastor used for a little while. You can, you can get through this. Uh, he said something that stuck with me for a little while a few weeks ago. He said, all of us have an expiration date. And you know, thank God we don't know when it is. But uh, we're all going to leave this world someday. And have you ever experienced something where you said, I wish I went and told somebody that I loved them. And, and you found out it was too late. You know, they'd already gone. And, and I, I, I experienced that not too long ago. About a couple of months ago, a friend of mine passed away. And I hadn't seen him in a while. And I thought, I wish I would told him. I wish I would given him a phone call. So listen to the words of this song. Heard Leah minister to me. Just a week ago, all of us were caught in sin. Now I'm reminded once again, lives are made for improvement. Love the people that God gives you. Yeah. 
Just love the people that God gives you. Cause one day you want to back. Love the people that God gives you. Cause one day. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Could you stand for the reading of God's Word? So good to see you in the house of the Lord. Amen. Good to see some friends I haven't seen in a while. It's good to see uh, Brother Larry Dye, Sister Carolyn, and also we got uh, Kendra and their baby boy. Amen. It's good to see you guys. Let's give them a good hand for being with us and all our other visitors. Amen. Uh, I was reminded to remind you, don't forget your Valentine's tickets, amen? And I always remind them that all of you guys do what I used to do, and that's wait to the last minute, amen? But I am ahead of you because I already paid for mine, praise the Lord, amen? And you need to catch up, right? Don't forget, also, how many saw the tumblers we have, the Mountville tumblers for sale? If you don't know what that is, see Sister Melissa right over here. She'll be glad to get you hooked up. Turn with me to the book of Genesis chapter 1. Praise the Lord. It's good to see you in the house of the Lord. I was reminded of the scripture as our brother was singing. David said about his son that passed. He said, shall he come to me? He said, he can't come to me. And David makes the most profound statement right there after all the mess that he created. After adultery, after lying, after getting uh, uh, getting Bathsheba's husband Uriah, getting him drunk, and then killing him. And the, mo- the greatest atrocity to me was he put the letter in Uriah the Hittite's hand and sent him back to Joab. I, and then they backed away from him and he got killed. And after all of his scheming and all of his meanness and all the things that he did, David makes the most profound statement about the young man, that, his baby that died. He said, shall he come to me? He said, he, shall, he can't come to me. He said, but this one thing. He said, I can go to him. Amen. Hey, how many can say today, amen, that, that I might have messed it up real bad before in my life, but everything's all right between me and the Lord this morning. Come on, somebody. I quit acting so holy. I, I, for all have sinned and come short. Amen. The, the fact of the matter being is, is we're still walking in the flesh. We have not lost our ability to sin. We should have lost our desire for sin, right? Amen. Genesis chapter 1, before I get started on a tangent that way. Verse 1. If you can't find Genesis, come on to the altar. We know you have never read your Bible in your whole life. It's the very first book. Go to Revelations and back up or go forward one. Amen. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep this is a part only key in on and the spirit of God I feel him in this place this morning children of God I don't know what he's about to do but he's about to do something amen and the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters let us pray Father, we bless you. We're so thankful, God, to be in the house of the Lord. Thankful for all the times you've ever moved before. But, God, we need you to move right now, especially right now. Father, there's some that are hanging in the balance in this house today, Lord, that are between heaven and hell. And today, God, by the touch of your spirit, they'll make the right choice and make the right decision and serve you. God, that's my prayer. God, don't let me preach one minute longer than I'm supposed to, God. Put the words in my mouth, Lord. And God, let faith come by hearing, hearing by the word of God. And God will forever give you the praise, honor, and glory. And everybody said, shake somebody's hand. Say, come on back tonight at 6 o'clock. 
and uh, let's have church again after a while. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. The word moved is R-A-C-H-A-P-H, to brood by implication, to be relaxed, to flutter, to move, to shake. This almost reads this morning as if God was hovering over the formless, dark, void place with anticipation of making his creation. You know, I, I maybe... Maybe I'm a little out there. I don't know. I think you got to be a little bit crazy, amen, to even try to pastor or preach, amen. But you know something that I, I, I like to think of it this way. Before you and I ever got here this morning, I believe, amen, that the heart of God was excited that he knew that we were going to be coming together in this place. I don't know this, but I, I wouldn't doubt that the Spirit of the Lord wasn't hovering in this house as he is right now, as he was beginning to move and already knew that you would be here and that I would be here. And he knew that we'd have the needs that we have every time we come together there's many needs in the house the greatest need of all mankind is to be right with God come on somebody nobody can come save the spirit of the Lord draw him has anybody ever been drawn by the spirit of the Lord this morning Amen. Something, something, something in the heart of God must have cried out during these times before He made the earth and said, I've already got enough angels that are crying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Something in the heart of God must have got excited when He said, Let us make man in our own image and in our likeness. God spoke and all creation came into existence, but He took His own hands and He reached down into the dirt, Amen, of the, of the earth or the dust, if you will, and He formed man into the very image that's that's why that God is so particular about you and I that he don't want us hating on anybody he don't want us talking mean about people because it's not so much the character of the person that you're trying to assassinate it's the image that they are created in we ought to have respect for the image red yellow black or white amen we are created in the image it takes so much more faith to believe amen uh, in, in evolution than it does to believe in creation you are here today by by specific design. Not only are you created in the image of God, you're here today by a divine appointment to hear a word that come from God. As the Spirit of God hovers in this place, would you take into consideration your soul? Would you take into consideration your eternal soul that's going to live forever? It would be one thing, children, if we died and went back to the earth and that was it. But you and I are going to live in eternity somewhere forever. If you believe that, you ought to give God a good praise. Amen. Genesis 2 and 7 said, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. A, a better interpretation was that he breathed into man the breath of lives. Amen. It was not just Adam's life or Eve's life. Amen. But since God breathed into man from then to now, you and I are still in the image of God and we're still breathing the breath of God. I don't care if you're saved or you're lost. Amen. The breath that comes in your lungs and out of your lungs. Amen. Comes from God. It was the breath of life. Amen. In him, the, the, John said, in him was life and the life was the light of men. I come by to tell you this this morning. Amen. If you're not serving the Lord, you better get it right with God. It's not going to be very long until the Lord comes back. I want you to understand, I am so totally shocked that we made it to 2020. Amen. I look for any day the sound of the trumpet. I look for any day. Amen. That he says, come you blessed of the Lord. I look for any day the next earth shaking event could be the rapture of the church amen and if you're not ready it's time to get ready somebody believes that ought to give him a praise i like to think about this watch this we're gonna get on into something else in a minute i got some good stuff i'm just kind of hanging around this for a minute you have to see that he came to nothing and he spoke this world into existence. And when it came to man, he reached down into the earth. I like to think about it like this. God got his hands dirty with me and you. You can't stick your hands down in dirt and not get and not get dirty. Amen. If you're going to get your hands in the dirt, you're going to come up with some dirt on your hands. Amen. And the Lord got his hands dirty. Amen. With you and I when he made the, the heavens and the earth. I, uh, uh, when he formed man after the forming of the heavens and the earth. And I, got, I like to think about this. Amen. 
Amen. The little woman that was caught in the very act of adultery. Amen. The Bible said that he squatted down and he got his hands dirty with her. Amen. He wrote in the dirt. Amen. I wish I knew what he wrote. I'd like to tell you this morning I do, but I don't. But the significant thing is, is in the creation, he reached down and he got his hands dirty. And in the redemption of that little woman that everybody hated and everybody wanted to destroy, he reached down then and he got his hands dirty. And how many times has he reached down and touched this old boy and got his hands dirty? How many times has he reached down into your life and prevented the enemy from destroying you? Amen. Amen. This is why. This is why one of the commandments is thou shalt not kill because if we kill, we're killing one, the image of God and stopping the breath of God that he breathed into man. After the creation of the world, all things in it, God rested not that he was tired, but for an example, Isaiah 40 and 28, put it on the board. Hast thou not known and hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not. Neither is weary, and there is no searching of his understanding. He never got tired of taking care of his children. He does not faint, but he gives power to do, to those who are faint. We first saw God in Genesis chapter 1, and he came and he hovered over the earth and, and created man. Now we see him coming back again to check on his creation, Genesis 3 and 8. And they heard the voice of the Lord. I don't have time, but if you want to talk later, we'll talk about John 1 and 1. The very word in the beginning was the Word, word was with God goes to this verse. Amen. The word, word in, 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 in the Greek is the same as the Hebrew word voice right here. And they heard the voice. What he was saying, John was saying that it was the pre-incarnated Christ that walked up into the garden and he heard the voice of the Lord. Who is the voice of the Lord? Who is the word? In the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. And they heard the voice of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord amongst the trees. We first saw God hovering and brooding. Now we see, amen, I believe the pre-incarnated Christ coming into the garden and he's walking in and he has a question that he wants to ask. He said, Adam, where art thou? He wasn't looking for a geographical place on the planet. He was saying, where are you at in the spirit? Where are you at now? Why is it that you have why is it that you're hiding from me now can i just tell you this all that god ever wanted we see his heart in this all that he ever wanted was to be in fellowship with you he created you for his pleasure he created you because he loves you he created you and he wanted you to love him back if you love him give him a praise being omnipresent he already knew what happened. He didn't come storming through the garden. He came walking. You ever get mad? No. <laughs> it's not you. It's the one behind you. Don't look back. They'll be looking at you. But uh, have you ever seen people get mad and throw a storm and fit and stomp and fit? And just get mad. Hey, man, that ain't real Christian like, is it? And Jesus already knew. And see, that's, that's the thing I want to debunk today. He already knew the mess you'd be in when you got here this morning. And he's not mad about it. He didn't come stomping through here looking to kill you. He come walking in this place, hovering over this place, looking to redeem you. He come in this house looking to try to woo your heart and to pull you into a right relationship before it's eternally too late. If he's Alpha and Omega, if he's already the beginning and the end, and he sees the end without him, he wants you now. If you look into the future, somebody said, well, I might get it right tomorrow. I might get it right the next day. I just don't know if God loves me. I come to tell you unequivocally that Jesus Christ came in this world to save sinners. Paul said, and I say, of whom I am chief. I want you to understand that God, if he'll save me, God will save you. He come looking for somebody this morning. Amen. All you good church people ought to help me right here. There's souls that are weighed in the balance this morning. He didn't come storming. He came walking. Friend, God came to his children when he knew they had sinned against him. When, they, when he knew they were in the wrong, 
This is why I can't accept. Well, this is why I can't accept people who paint God with an ugly brush and say, He's mad all the time and He's got a hammer and He's about to hit you in the head. If He wanted to kill me, I gave Him enough reasons. And don't look at me. Don't look at me like you ain't either. We all have given Him enough reasons. And you know something about the foreknowledge of God? He already knew you wasn't going to make it right. He already knew you was going to mess it up. He already knew, amen, that he already knew the things you'd be involved in as you come in this church service today. He already knew, and he ain't even mad about it. All he is is the heart of God is broke because of the fellowship is broken between you and him. And God is reaching and walking and touching and moving in this service today. God, I stood right over there, and I said, oh, God, how many people are under the sound of my voice today that don't know you. How many backsliders have walked in the door, oh God, that need you? And God, I don't want to portray you wrong. I want them to see that for God so loved you, so loved the world, that He gave His only because I want them to know that there's somebody that cares and His name is Jesus this morning. Amen. Just for a moment, let's look at Adam and Eve. Your Bible said they hid themselves from the presence of the Lord. Hey, I, I'm not being mean, okay? And if you ask my wife, she tell you I'm mean sometimes. Don't believe a word of her. No, she says, right? That's why I don't let her preach, right? But uh, what, 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 what's, let, let's look at let's look at what really happened right here. Here comes God. And they was trying to hide themselves. Do you know that a lot of people will hide themselves in massive churches? Amen. Whether God moves or not, they can hide in the midst of a bunch of people. Amen. And never, and, and, and never, if it will, be touched by the Spirit of the Lord. And if they are, they hide it so good. And you know why? That it's getting more popular for people of alternative lifestyles to pastor churches. I never would have thought it. I got a dear friend of mine, and I, 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 I rarely ever call denominational names. But I got a great friend of mine who's pastoring in a United Methodist church. And he called me the other day, and he said, we're about to split right down the middle and I'm going to the conservative side of it and he said we're going to need a revival pastor and he said I know that you're not United Methodist he said I know who you are he said but would you come and would you preach and would you teach and would you help me through this hard time he said because our denomination is split down the middle between people that think it's all right to live an alternative lifestyle and be in the pulpit I come by to tell somebody that's a way that a lot of people hide from God they come to church and the Lord don't show up but you came to the wrong church this morning for Jesus himself is already moving in the midst my God I felt the weight of that I felt the heaviness of the spirit fall on me I felt the glory of God touch my soul I felt the acknowledgement of the Holy Ghost on the inside that he is here Glory to God, He's here. Hallelujah to His name, He's here. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. My God, glory to God. Somebody praise Him while He's moving. somebody say I hope you get what he pays for this morning I hope you know he's here glory to God hallelujah hallelujah Proverbs 15 3 said the eyes of the Lord are in every place beholding the evil and the good I put a footnote said you can run but you can't hide Hey, look, can I mess your theology up? Just a little bit. Just a little bit. I know you don't think this, but I sat in a lot of bars in my life. I sat in a lot of bars. I've seen a lot of things that a man ought not see. I've seen a lot of stuff go on that other people ought not do and participated in some myself. But this never failed 
every time that I was sitting down and trying my best to have a good time and sitting there running from God and knew I was wrong. Every time I sat down, he sat down beside me. Somebody said, oh, I don't believe that. He's holy and his name is, you got that right. He is holy. But I come by to tell you that he walked right up in the midst of a bar and he tapped me on the shoulder and tears would run off my face for I knew that I wasn't right with God and I couldn't get away from him. David said, if I make my bed in hell, he's there. If I ascend to the highest height, he's there. I come to tell you, stop running. God can see you. I ain't going to get through this message, George world. He's watching. He's looking. You thought he just showed up at church. He's been following you around. Woo! He's been following you around. Amen. Jeremiah 23, 24. Can any hide himself in a secret place that I shall not see him? Saith the Lord, do not I feel the heaven and the earth? Saith the Lord. Genesis 3 and 9 said, the Lord God called unto Adam and said, where art thou? I want to. We saw him. He hovered. Then we saw him as he walked. And as he walked in, he already knew the trouble they were in. And he wasn't mad. He just said, where are you at? Adam, have you left your first love? Adam, did you eat the fruit that I told you not to? Uh, uh, now, now, let's look at Now, let's look at God. I want you to see God do something else. We saw him hover. Who throwed my rag over here? Did you do that? That people got heavy. We sweat a lot. We saw him hovering. We saw him walking. Now let's watch God when he runs. You know, he runs. How many understand that a parable is an earthly story with a heavenly meaning? In Luke 15, 13, it said, Not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country and there wasted his substance with riotous living. How many know there's no place like home? How many understand this that there is? That, how many understand that inside there, there's safety in the arcs of God when we come together? Amen. And, he, and you know something? He, 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 he followed you. Some of you he followed on in here and then he had to leave after the Lord began to move it into praise and worship. But he followed you to the door and he's standing outside the door. Right now the enemy of your soul is. And he's saying, come on outside and let's play. Come on outside. You, you, I can't get you. If if you stay in there and come on don't go to that altar what are you thinking just come on come on come on come on come on outside let's play a while i want you to understand as a young man i thought it was a wonderful thing to have an invite for the enemy and i tried my best to be the best one he had but i want you to understand i didn't realize that what he was trying to do was he was trying to waste me i didn't realize in my youth that the alcohol i was drinking was destroying my liver i didn't understand that the devil was putting mental pictures in my mind that I'd have to get sanctified to get out of my head. Amen. I didn't realize that playing with the devil and coming out from among the, the, the house of the Father, I was going the wrong way. I didn't realize the plan of the enemy was to destroy me. Sin always takes you farther than you wanted to go. Keep you longer than you meant to stay and make you pay a price far greater than you ever thought you would pay. Jesus tells three stories in Luke 15 to show the religious crowd God still loves the sinner. The 99, the lost coin, and the prodigal son. In verse 15, and this is my prayer for somebody here today that they would come to their self. Luke 15, 17. And when he came to himself, after he realized that he spent all, after he realized it wasn't as bad in the church as he thought it was, I've seen people quit church over the craziest thing. They looked at me funny, sat in my seat, parked in my parking place, and didn't sing my song. I said, I'd quit too, bless God. Hey, man, I can't believe people would act like that. I'd go down at Walmart with the rest of them and hang out and talk about how mean it was to you at church. If you're looking for an excuse, you can find one. Look at it with this. He quit looking for excuses. 
because he got outside of the graces of the Father's house. And the Bible said that he came to himself. And he said, how many hired servants of my father have bread enough to spare? And I perish with hunger. Some people haven't come to the to themselves yet. They're having too much fun in the hog pen. Amen. They think they're having fun while they're wallowing in the mud with the hogs. Amen. But I want you to understand there's a day of reckoning coming one day after a while. God will allow lack in your life to draw you back into the kingdom of God. He's not willing that any should perish, but it all would come to repentance. God will allow you to go to the hog pen if that's what it takes to get you a hold of yourself. It's not about you anyway. Amen. But and that's what that's why a lot of churches are just running over. They just cater to everything and make it all about them. I want you to understand we love you. We're glad you're here, but it's not about you and it's not about me. It's about a Savior that came and lived a sinless life. It's about a Savior that no man took his life, but he gave it freely. It's about a Savior that arose on the third and appointed morning with power over death, hell, and the grave. That's what it's about. Amen. And he arose. Watch, 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 watch. And came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father, his father saw him and had compassion and ran. You, you, you see what Jesus is saying? You see what he's saying? The religious people said, if you ever just messed it up real good one time, God don't want nothing to do with your hide. That's what he said. Jesus said, not so. He said, he'll put 99 in a safe place, oh boys, and he'll go after the one and he'll search till he finds that one and he'll rejoice over the one that he found uh, greater than the 99 that didn't go nowhere. He said, y'all don't know him. He said, like I know him. He said, for my father, he said, he will light up a candle and sweep the whole house until he found the coin, that precious thing to him. He said, you don't know my father. He said, all you've ever read about him was he's hovering and all you you ever read about him was that it was walking he said but i want you to understand when one sinner comes home god the father runs and goes after them amen amen you need to understand the custom of the day the older men did not run because their robes went all the way around to the ground it was considered shameful for a man to pull up his robe and run Amen. His belt and his sash and show his nakedness. Jesus was speaking of himself and the Father when he said, The Father laid aside his garments without shame and he ran. They're coming. I ain't done preaching. They're coming real quick because I feel a clothes coming. Mark 15, 24. Watch, 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 watch. Jesus was talking about the Father parting the garments. He said, And when they had crucified him, They parted his garments and cast lots upon them. Whatever man should should take. We must understand. Jesus, the Son of God, unequivocal. I struggle. I struggle. And I don't understand how. All these years later, I still don't know how. If I live the fall of this year, I've become this church 26 years. March, if I live the March, I'll be pastoring here 16 of those 26 years. And all these years, you'd think I'd have it figured out. But I don't know how. And I don't know why. He loves me. I, I understand you. Why me? What good did I ever do to deserve anything he ever did for me? The Bible said the ones that are forgiven much the same love them much. The little woman at the well said, come see a man. You know what she essentially said? 
who knew all my thoughts and loved me anyway. That told me everything I ever did. And he still loved me. And he still offered me a drink of living water. He said, if you knew the gift of God, you'd ask of me to give you a drink. I'd give you a drink of living. If you knew the gift of God that was in this house today, if you knew the power that's here to bring deliverance, God is running toward you through this little old mess that's standing all over the building. Isaiah 53. Said, surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken and smitten of God and afflicted. But God, but he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we're healed. Look at what verse 6 says All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. God came running in this place this morning. He loves you. He loves you. You know what? I wouldn't do it, not on purpose. But I could do something to you that would be so hideous that you would that that you would never forgive me. You'd hate me all the days of your life. But you know, every sin I ever committed was against God. And He loved me anyway. And He loves you anyway. And He knows what you had done before you got here. Look at this. God's already given His own altar call. Prayer walkers is coming. Saints of God are praying. Come on. God's given the altar call. I, I, he's doing it Himself. It's the Holy Ghost. He's running in and out of these aisles and He's touching hearts. And He said, I know what you did. Would you come? He said, I don't care. Let's get it under the blood and serve me. He said, you've been gone a long time. Would you come back today and let me give you a fresh start? Would you come back today to God? Luke 15, 22. And I promise I'm quitting. The Father said to His servants, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and his shoes on his feet. The robe represented his kinship to the Father. The ring was the gold master charge and the shoes represented he wasn't a slave anymore. Would you come? Let today be the day of salvation. What more can Jesus do? He sent this message. He came. He bled and died. And he's touching your heart. I know he's touching your heart this morning. I know he is. Would you come? Would you come today and lay this thing down? You can't say, well, I'll do it tomorrow when I get good enough. You're never going to get good enough. You may not never have another chance. I'm not trying to scare you. But this might be the last altar call you walk out on. This might be the last time God touches you. And if it is, where do you stand with God today? He's running up and down these aisles and touching hearts right now. Would you come? Prayer walkers are coming. You don't even have to walk by yourself. They won't pull on you. They won't drag you out of your seat. They'll only walk with you down here and help you pray until God fills your heart and fills your spirit. Would you come? I'll see you. The atmosphere is changing now For the Spirit of the Lord is here The evidence is all around That the Spirit of the Lord is here the atmosphere is changing now For the Spirit of the Lord is here The evidence is all around That the Spirit of the Lord is here Overflow in this place Fill our hearts with your love 
let me tell you something. It's better than anything you will ever experience in this world. And I thank God for that. That He's so awesome that no matter what you're going through, He will supply everything for you, no matter what it is. And ladies, I just want to plug in right here. We're having our first meeting of the year tomorrow night at 6.30 in the fellowship hall. So bring a friend, bring a finger food, and we're going to have devotion, and we're going to have food and fellowship. And also come back tonight at 6 o'clock. Brother Dylan is going to pray for you. See you tonight at 6 o'clock.